He was so much fun last year on Radio Row. We had to run it back. Austin Eckler. Back in well, the flesh. I was going to say San Diego Chargers, but I call them Wow. Myself. I mean, it's, it's too Did late to say Did you even play in San Diego? No. Yeah, I, I was, was actually I was there for six weeks during the transition years. So that was that. Was that would have been terrible. But we yeah, got yeah, Austin yeah. Eckler here. He's on behalf of Dairy Queen. We um, are. Last year, monster season for you. Chargers make the playoffs. This year, just everything really from week one on just kind of went against you guys, huh? Yeah. You know, um, it's one of those years that – you learn from you learn you learn from every year but really this one i, I think i learned the most from uh, as far as like what i expect from myself you know as far as a leader as far as anticipating um, what I need to do going into the next season to really make that, that the team come together. I think I've been a good leader as far as right motivating, getting guys ready to go, things like that. But when it comes to culture, I, I know I know I need to step myself up um, and bring more culture because th- what we get went through last year was 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 a community thing. It wasn't you know the lightning rod, which is Brandon Staley. Like, oh, Brandon Staley. It, it was it was more than that. And so I think with Jim Harbaugh coming in, I think hopefully that's um, the new flavor, the new kind of spark that that team needs to really bring that culture together and set that destination on the so right spot. So you mentioned the idea of like a season kind of unraveling. When does it get to a point, Austin, where you can kind of sense, man, just something ain't right here? Is it like immediately? Do you notice it like five, six weeks into a year? When does that kind of happen? I mean, as a competitor, you're, you think you're going to win every game regardless. Well, like, you're going to figure it out. Exactly. Yeah. Like even if things are going wrong, like – you know, we, we can use the, the Thursday night football game, you know, versus the Raiders, for example. It was the worst game that I probably ever have been a part of. But, like, we're going into that game thinking we're going to win the game. We're not thinking we're going to be 60, whatever, to 20 or whatever it was. Um, and so, they're, they're, as a competitor, you're, you're trying to do new things. You're trying to switch. You, you try to st- stay true to yourself. But then, at some point, yeah, you you know what's going wrong. You, you can see it. You, you know, you feel it from the media, your record, all of that. But it's, hey, show up this week. This is a brand new week. Let's try to get back on the right, or on the right path. And... Uh, just didn't happen for this year. So you've talked about this a lot. I've talked a lot, talked about it a ton because I'm in New York. So mm-hmm. Saquon Barkley, obviously his future in question, your future in question, Derrick Henry with the Titans, his future in question, and this idea that the running back, and you guys bring so much to the table, but because of the way NFL GMs are handling your position, you guys aren't getting what you guys deserve. Like how frustrating is that becoming for you guys? Like looking at, hey, our best years, we're at our best in the early stages of our career. How do you, how do you guys get compensated? Well, that? It, that depends. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll push back on that because we see Christian having one of the best. He's been you know, great. He's in, what, year seven. Fair. We saw Raheem just have his best year. He's in, I don't know, he's 31 years old. And so it, it depends on your situation. Got it's it. all situational. What I do push back on is franchise tagging our guys when they're coming out of their contract here and you don't allow them to go to the open market. Basically kick the can. And you're saying, hey, I'm going to put all the risk on you and I'm also not going to let you negotiate your contract. Franchise, boom, stuck. So that was what we were upset about. You know, when, when we were looking in the open market and we're out here absolutely that's that's what we're looking for we want a fair chance to go get what we can potentially get with a new team or with the same team that we're with and so going into this offseason that's that's what we're, i'm expecting right i'm gonna be a free agent um we have yeah josh jacobs tony pollard as well that are coming out into the oh yeah class, there's, there's the some line. running backs coming out. Oh, yeah that class was crazy um and then the class right before us too and so it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting how it plays out i'm looking forward to it and just trying to find a new a new home or maybe going back i'm not closing any doors with the Chargers or anything like that so, so see how it plays out curiously have you heard from chargers head coach jim harbaugh yes now? i have so harbaugh reached out like either the day of or the day after he got hired um and reached out just opened up the line just hey if you have any questions want to talk to me want to chat about anything um so i, I appreciated that because he didn't have to do that because you know my my future is uncertain um with the team but I feel like I've gone through what we went through, and I feel like I, I, kn- I have now learned from that last season. I feel like I could help put that, that team in the right direction now, being through that, and also shed light um, just as one of the captains of that team last year in the last few years, and so would love to be back in that room with him. Well, I was going to say, a whole lot of teams, Austin, are going to want to run it back that can bring to the table what you can bring to the table. Jim Harbaugh, his career at Michigan, his career in the NFL – He's done some unbelievable things with running backs, man. Yeah, you know, I've actually talked to a couple of uh, just some of the, the player membership that played with him out in um, San Fran, and they were just they were just speaking so highly of how he can just bring the best out of individuals, and from a standpoint of, of mindset and of culture, and like really getting a lot of buy-in um, to a, a really high standard and level of play and a le- level of detail. And so I'm just talking football in general, not even talking about running backs, but I'm just saying that is what you need because you can't you can't force a square peg through you know a, a round hole, right? You have to play to kind of your team's kind of makeup, right? You ha- you can't say this is the way we're going to do it because this is the way. I, do. Like, I feel like a good coach can put the culture in, but then also can use the 
their t- their team to their team's strengths. And so I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays out with them. Uh, I mean, the relationship with Harbaugh and your quarterback, Justin Herbert, if indeed you are back with the Los Angeles Chargers, listen, he's super talented. The sky's yep. the limit for him. Do you almost look at Harbaugh as a guy who maybe take Justin to the next level? I mean, I know he's it, t- there, it, t- it takes a village. Like, it takes right. a village okay. because I think I think Justin's there. I think it's the all of us around him that need to continue to also continue to bring up and come together because the, the if you look at our talent, the talent was there on the team, right? We got so much money being spent on the defense. It was like the highest defense, like paid defense. Yeah. We had a ton of talent that we brought back from, you know, the year before we made the playoffs on offense. Um, yeah, we saw some injuries, but we, we dealt with injuries last year too. Um, and so that, that wasn't it. In, in my opinion, that's not why we had the season we did. Um, and so it's like, okay, what is it? What is, what's in between that we can really hone in and get the guys to be bought into the little thing? Because in my opinion, it was death by a thousand cuts. Um, and so we have a new start. We learned from that. And I'm hoping Harbaugh can really, like I said, bring us together and really, if I'm back there, right, really uplift the leadership of that team. Okay. So I can't wait to keep Austin Eckler next mm. year in fantasy. Mm. I know some people mm. are going to say, hey, oh, I had Austin. Because listen, know. let's be honest. You have Austin Eckler on your fantasy team. The last five years, the right. fantasy team's doing pretty well. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. For anybody out there that's like, oh, do I keep this guy? What's your message to them? <laughs> well, here's the thing. Look, sports. Obviously, we want to play at a high level consistently, especially in, in football. You're going to see some some ups and downs. That's how it goes, right? I feel like you watch basketball. You can see you guys play at a really consistent level. In football, you depend on your team a lot more. Um, and so when your team's having a down year, it's it, it plays effect on every single person on the team. Um, and so look. We went through a down year, and so it doesn't mean that's defining you, you know. But hey, now I have a chance to go bounce back, and that's exactly what I'm looking to do. And so I'm looking for another bounce back year in fantasy and also on the field as well. Okay, so you're in the same division, at least you have been for the last couple of years, yeah. with Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. They're in the AFC Championship game. They are. Every single one of those years. I know, this it's is annoying. Another isn't it? year. I mean, we're all so annoying, man. We're all sick of them. But <laughs> talk about the idea of competing against that team. Like, for years, it was the Patriots. I it was yeah. Bill Belichick, it was yeah. Tom Brady. I'm a fan of a team in the AFC East where it almost felt like, oh my goodness, how do you how do you get over that hurdle? Talk about the idea of just trying to like chase down this team that has kind of been the standard of excellence now for six years. Yeah, you know, from from an outsider's perspective, I think it's I think it's awesome what they're doing. Um, but for being in the Chargers, I hate it because you know I, I got to play them every every um, every year, which. I don't hate that because it's opportunity. Hey, you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. Um, so that's always good. But then, you know, our games are always so close. It's one of the teams that I love playing the most just because they, they have a great culture um, at their fan base. And then also when we play them, I feel like it's just always just head to head, like coming down to like the, the wire. Um, and then, you know, seeing him and just putting respect on game, you know, just their team and what they have going on and what they've been able to do over the past six years um, has been remarkable. Um, it's something that, you know, we're all chasing. We're all chasing. All, all teams that are trying to have this legacy are chasing what they've been able to do. And so they're kind of setting the standard, which Brady did before, and now the Chiefs are doing that. And so now everyone's kind of chasing that standard. And so as a competitor, right, I, I want to I beat him into the ground, but as a, res- a guy with respect to the game, also, you know, I respect what they're doing and all the talent that, that after Kelsey um, passed has and so um, wishing them a good game I don't really care who wins um, really cheering for some of my guys out there I hope they both lose fair enough <laughs> uh, from like your skill set as a running back catching a ball out of the backfield obviously using your speed who was the guy like growing up Austin Eckler was like I want to be like him so funny story about me I grew up in the cowboy life so I grew up riding horses being around like bull riders things like that so I didn't actually grow up watching the NFL interesting see when yes. you said the cowboy life I'm like oh that no, was like, cowboy life no 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 no, no, no. like life. like building fence you know ranching I'm pitching hay to, to horses every morning breaking ice you know feeding livestock so when did horses. when did you get the football bug um, so I used football to pay for my education and I was, I was going into business and I was like, Hey, let me, let me keep, I was a division two, so I don't get a full ride, but the way I could increase my scholarship was just playing better. So getting all conference. So I really dedicated myself to that. And then after my junior year, my coach comes to me and is like, Hey man, you have some NFL scouts asking about you. And I'm like, there's no one from my school that's ever gone to the NFL too, by the way, I'm from, uh, this tiny division two Western state up in Colorado. And so I'm like, who, who, like, who are these people? Um, and he's like, yeah, yeah, scouts calling me asking about you and, and so that kind of started my peak interest. Like, oh, let me start looking into this NFL stuff. Like, I obviously knew about it. It's it's a, it's a big brand, but uh, really didn't 
dive into it until after my after my junior year. Okay, fair enough. Now, when you're playing and you're competing, you're obviously not rooting for these guys to do well. But who is the guy? And, and I saw you mic'd up week one against the char- uh, the Dolphin Charger game. They yeah. had you. You were yeah, like, yeah, wow, yeah, great yeah. game, back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tyree Kill's putting on a show, and you're yeah. like, yeah, man, this guy's doing, so doing it's not that thing. It's not that I'm not rooting for them. If I'm playing against them, I'm no, not rooting for them. Of course you're not rooting for them. But... Like my guys, I root for everybody. You know, as far as especially the running backs. Like when when but I'm that's not, where I'm I was going to go. So you know? like, who is the running back that you love watching when you're sitting down watching the game? Who's the guy that's like, Man, wow, I, I, love, I love watching I love, this I love, game. I love a lot of these guys. Um, you know, I love watching Christian. I think he's he definitely the best back in the league right now. I love Derek. I love Alvin Kamara. Um, you know, we got some young guys coming up. Jameer Gibbs, Bijan Robinson that had great Gibbs, years. He flies, oh my dude. goodness, he how flies. Did, man! So like, I just love watching the running back position and guys doing it in their their way. It's like it's, it's like an off for them, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, like each exactly. guy's got like their yeah, own yeah, craft yeah, yeah. and it's, what they bring so to great. the table. It, that's why I think it's one of the one of the most exciting positions to watch um, because we're so different, but then we all have different ways to having finding the success. Uh, have success. you heard that your game in some ways resembles Tiki Barber? I have heard that actually. Because like when I ago. watch yeah, your yeah, yeah. game and the way you catch the ball out of the backfield, yeah, yeah, yeah. I watch Tiki for years with the okay. Giants. I'm like, okay. I see a lot of Tiki okay. in Austin Eckler. Okay, and I, I said I appreciate that. Yeah, Listen. absolutely. Yeah, Ball great player. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's that. not a bad comparison or bad person to be compared to. So, uh, I've been on his show too uh, a couple times. Nice, um, yeah, full yeah. circle there. Yeah. Um, all right, Austin, tell me what you got going on DQ. Derek yeah, so we got we got Super Bowl coming up, right? And a big part of Super Bowl is what. The food, right? Oh yeah, we got to have food, and so Dairy Queen, you know, you can gra- grab yourself some great desserts. The blizzards, obviously, are amazing. However, right, Dairy Queen has been has been in the food realm and also stepping up for for fruit, Super Bowl food as well because now they have their honey barbecue sauce and toss chicken strips as well. So you tell me, chicken strips, and I could get the blizzard. You're getting chicken strips. You can Should've grab, grab your grab yourself a. We we were there this morning. <laughs> we, trust me, I, nice. I already got some. There you go. Um, burgers. Right, the uh, the chicken strips, and then uh, you know you can get yourself a blizzard while you're there too. But if you want to learn more, you gotta check out the app or check out DairyQueen.com uh, so you can check out just what the options are and get yourself some DQ and uh, yeah, keep keep the food, keep the tradition of, of football going. You excited for free agency? Ooh, excited? Yes. Um, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting because people are like, hey, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? But there's so many different factors, so I. I can't be like this is exactly where I want to go. Here are my top teams because there's there's the money factor, there's the usage factor, there's the coordinator factor, lifestyle there's, factor. There, exactly. Where so, you living? You know, hundred percent. So really, like the quality at this point, I'm going into year eight. The quality has has really become an important factor for me in my decision. That's hard to believe. Austin Eckler, year eight in the league. I'm year getting old, eight, man. Dude. We all are. Getting we old, are. man. It's That's inevitable. It's a, good, it's a good thing. Well, listen, good thing. I expect a monster year for you wherever you're playing. Appreciate Best it. of luck, success. That's Austin Eckler. Awesome. Chargers, we'll see if he's back. We're coming right back.